Sometimes you have to search for something in a computer document where you don't know the exact text, but you know kind of what it looks like. For example, an address or a date. There is a technique called regular expressions that are used by us, which is very effective at trying to find this formatted information from text. In this video, I'm going to explain the technique and on the way, I'll introduce some of the fundamental ideas from a field of mathematics called language theory. To do this, I'm going to introduce a highly contrived minimalist dungeon crawling role playing game. Before that, I'm going to pause and say that the field of language theory and regular expressions in particular is something that I have a great passion for, not just because they are a highly versatile tool, but because they have a type of abstract beauty hidden underneath what is admittedly an ugly exterior. In many ways, they have a gap moe that dr keeps drawing me back to them. So let's introduce my RPG. It is set in a dungeon made of various rooms. There is a starting room and a goal room. In each room, there are labeled one-way doors that allow you to exit the room, travel down the corridor and enter another room. In order to win, you have to navigate through the doors and end up in the goal room. As role playing games go, this is very bare bones. All the rooms have the same number of doors and a consistent labeling scheme. These labels could be anything. Numbers, letters, symbols. This collection of door labels will be called our alphabet. So we could have an alphabet consisting of cat, dog, T-Rex, and Taito, the kanji meaning looking like dragons flying. In this dungeon, each room will have four exits. A winning play in this particular game would be dog dog, and another effective path would be T-Rex dog. Sitting out the rooms like this is complex and hard to follow, so let's turn this into a map. This is a diagram of all the paths we can take in this dungeon. Each circle represents a room, the double circle represents the goal room, and the arcing arrows between each room are the corridors, and this solid arrow with start on it represents the start. This is still a bit complex. Since we only care about the goal, any rooms that can never lead to the goal are not important to us. These are basically traps. We can simplify our dungeon by removing all the trap rooms. A winning path through this dungeon is called a word. We can create a list of all these words. You can notice by making use of loops within the dungeon, there are an infinite number of possible words. We call this list of all possible words a language. Because languages created this way are rather simple and have regular patterns, we call these languages regular languages. Is there a way of conveniently representing infinite words in a regular language in a neat finite form. It might also give us an easier way to interpret a complex graph and gain understanding of graphs like this. And from this, perhaps find text that matches patterns, which is the main task we set up. Whenever there is a complex problem, it is handy to start with the simplest solution and slowly work up the complexity. Now, in the simplest case, the entrance is the same as our goal. That is pretty trivial, and we can represent this pattern with an empty string. Now, the next most complex would be two rooms with a corridor joining them. We could depict them in a map like this. So, in order to get to the room, we'd have to pass along the letter arc. We should prepend this arc's letter to the empty string. This sounds like a roundabout way of saying we should write down the letter, but by putting it this way, we can generalize it to any number of chained rooms. Just treat the next room as a goal. Follow the rule of prepending the appropriate letter. Let's consider a slightly more complex situation where there are two arcs going to the goal state. In this situation, there are two possible letters that can reach the goal. We can write this down by using a vertical line to represent the alternative. So this map accepts dog or cat. More than two is simple as well. Just another line 
and another appropriate label. We can use the same trick that we used before of thinking of each state as a goal state for the state before it in order to string together states. Sometimes we might need to add brackets to remove ambiguity. The last bit of complexity is loops. Again, let's start with the simplest loop, one that goes from the goal state to the goal state. This means you can have zero or more of that label. Let's indicate this using an asterisk. With the same logic, we can treat each part as having goal and start states. So we can reduce any complex map into a simple finite pattern. Since this is an expression that is used to represent a regular language, we call this a regular expression or regex for short. Process of turning a graph into a regex can be reversed, allowing us to create a graph that will match a regular expression for a particular regex. The mathematical term for devices that can operate automatically are called automata. And since these automata only have a finite number of, of possible states, they are called finite state automata. It is quite easy to build finite state automata in a computer. We can construct a table with a column for each input, a row for each state, and populate it with the next state to step into. Doing simple memory lookups like this on a computer is very fast. So what we can do is define a regex that looks like the thing we want to see. Then we translate it into a finite state automata. We can then search the text by starting at the start of the document and stepping through the finite state machine until it reaches a trap state or the goal state. If it reaches a trap state, the starting point is moved forward by one and the scan is repeated until a match is found or we run out of document. Like with everything else, there are alternatives and optimizations that can be made implementing this. So to find dates in a document, all we need to do is create a regex to match the date. To make things more compact, we can write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as slash D. Then we can do an ISO 8601 date like this. Four dates for the year, followed by a dash, two dates for the month, another dash, then the final two digits. In a just and perfect world, the only date format would be the ISO 8601 date format. However, we don't live in such a world. Some people make use of twisted formats like December 7th, 1928. We can build on our previous regex. For example, if we use slash W, to represent the word characters A to Z, we can go something like this. And indeed, we can keep adding to this the various representations of date. The advantages of regexes is that you can learn to read them and you can build up complex regular expression from many simple patterns. Finite state autonoma are the simplest type of autonoma. Sit at the bottom of a hierarchy of increasingly powerful automata, which I've glossed over much of the details of. I would love to go deeper into these details, but that would be something for another video. But for the time being, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy using regular expressions half as much as I do.